Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. Prison escapes are one of those rare types of crimes where many people can't seem to help but root for the convicts. Though they sometimes result in dangerous people getting back onto the streets, the combination of ingenuity and meticulous planning required to successfully pull off some of these jailbreaks makes it incredibly easy to get sucked into the story. Despite the intrigue, thankfully, it appears that for most criminals, breaking out of prison is usually the easy part as most are recaptured in just a few days or weeks. The numbers are even less favorable for high-risk offenders. One study found that 92% of fugitives from medium to high security prisons were recaptured within a year. Still, the public's appetite for prison escape stories is obvious, with some of the most classic movies, books, and television shows of all time making ample use of the prison escape plot. Today, we wanted to take a look at a few examples of the ingenious prison escapes that inmates have successfully pulled off over the years. While some of the stories we have chosen are more well-known than others, we tried to avoid ones that we felt almost everyone has heard about dozens of times, such as the escape from Alcatraz, The Great Escape, and El Chapo's infamous tunnel. Before we get to our list, don't forget to subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. With that out of the way, here are eight insane prison escapes that actually worked. In 2013, convicted murderers Charles Walker and Joseph Jenkins were able to escape from Florida's Franklin Correctional Facility by taking advantage of the prison's bureaucracy. They noticed that a lot of paperwork processed by staff at the facility was not closely examined as the job was quite monotonous. Taking advantage of this, Walker and Jenkins decided to use what little resources they had available to them to craft official-looking documents advising that they were up for release. The end result was reportedly quite convincing, containing correct case numbers, convincing reproductions of the signatures of both a judge and the Orlando State Attorney, as well as the seal of the Orange County Clerk of Court's office. After their escape, the men even registered as felons with the state, filing out paperwork and having their pictures taken to make it seem like a normal release. Unfortunately for the two men, it wasn't long before law enforcement caught on to the scheme, and Walker and Jenkins were recaptured just a few weeks later at a motel in Panama City, Florida. Choi Gap Bok's incredible 2012 prison escape earned him the nickname the Korean Houdini from the local press. Choi had been arrested on suspicion of robbery, but after five days in jail, decided to utilize his 23 years of experience practicing yoga to help him break out. In the early morning hours of September 17th, he waited for the guards to fall asleep before oiling his upper body and squeezing through the tiny food slot at the bottom of his cell. Though the slot measured just 5.9 inches tall by 17.7 .7 inches wide, Choi was able to get through with no problem, making it out in just 34 seconds. He was captured on CCTV camera, running from the jail moments later. He reportedly left behind some covered pillows and blankets in his bed to make it look like he was still sleeping when the guards came to check on him. Though Choi's escape was definitely impressive, he didn't get much of a chance to enjoy his freedom, and was captured a mere six days later. Though Richard McNair escaped from jail on three separate occasions, it is his last prison break that he is best known for. In 2006, McNair was being housed at a facility in Pollock, Louisiana, where one of his duties was to repair old and damaged mailbags. Over the course of several months, he devised a plan to hide himself inside a specially constructed escape pod, which would be buried beneath a pile of bags. The escape pod was also equipped with a breathing tube for McNair. On the day of his escape, McNair climbed into his hiding pod and was placed onto a pallet. The pallet was then shrink-wrapped and shipped to a nearby warehouse. Because the warehouse was unguarded, he simply waited for employees to go to lunch, after which he cut himself out of his escape pod and walked off the property. Though he was confronted by a police officer while on the run several hours later, he was miraculously able to talk his way out of the situation, telling the officer that he was out for a jog. McNair was immediately added to the U.S. Marshal's 15 most wanted list, but would spend over a year avoiding law enforcement before he was finally captured in Campbellton, New Brunswick. In March of 2014, con artist Neil Moore was in the UK's Wandsworth prison after being arrested on a series of fraud charges. When he decided to try and escape, he did what he knew best, setting up an elaborate scheme to fool prison officials into letting him walk right out the front door. Moore first gained access to an illicit smartphone that was smuggled in by another inmate. 
using a technique known as typo squatting, Moore set up a website that looked like that of the Southwalk County Court, complete with a convincingly similar URL. Next, he created an email account associated with his new domain, sending official-looking emails to prison staff that ordered his immediate release. It took prison employees three days to even notice that Moore had escaped, finally catching on when his lawyer came to visit him at Wandsworth and discovered that he was nowhere to be found. That same day, though, Moore turned himself in, choosing to stand trial for his crimes rather than going on the run. He would spend a total of seven years in prison. The HMP Parkhurst was formerly considered one of England's most secure prisons. Located on the Isle of Wight, the facility housed some of the country's most troublesome criminals and had been referred to as an island fortress. But Parkhurst's formidable reputation and its actual status as a top security prison would be downgraded in the 1990s following an ingenious escape by three prisoners. Andrew Rogers, Keith Rose, and Matthew Williams were all serving life sentences at Parkhurst when they decided to make their escape attempt. Thanks to their jobs in the prison's sheet metal shop, the inmates had ample access to the supplies they needed for their escape. They constructed a 25-foot ladder to scale the facility's walls, a homemade gun in case they needed to use force, and a few other miscellaneous tools to aid in their escape. By far the most ingenious of the tools was a prison master key which the inmates crafted from memory. On the day of their escape, Rogers, Williams, and Rose used the key to open a series of doors until they gained access to the outside of the facility. Next, they cut through some of the fencing before finally using their ladder to scale the prison's walls. Though the escape was artfully executed, the men failed to come up with a long-term plan and were captured just a few days later after unsuccessfully attempting to steal an airplane. In 2015, convicted murderers David Sweat and Richard Matt broke out of the Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, New York. The case is often compared to the Stephen King novella and film The Shawshank Redemption, both in terms of the elaborate planning and similar methods used in the escape. Matt and Sweat were housed in a good behavior unit of the facility. This allowed them to access many things normally off-limits to inmates in other areas of the prison, such as cooking stations, wall-mounted telephones, showers, and card tables. It also gave them greater freedom to interact with the facility staff. Using this to their advantage, Matt and Sweat were able to enlist the help of the prison seamstress, Joyce Mitchell, and a guard named Gene Palmer. Mitchell and Palmer smuggled many items into the facility for the inmates, including hacksaw blades, which were concealed in frozen hamburger meat. The first phase of the plan involved Sweat sawing a rectangular hole into the back of his cell, followed by another one into Matt's adjacent wall. These holes gave the men access to the prison's infrastructure. Night after night, Sweat would climb through the hole in his cell wall after lights out, searching for a way to escape amidst the hidden substructure of the prison. He would then return each morning before the 5.30 headcount. Though he briefly considered cutting through a waste pipe in true Shawshank fashion, he eventually realized that with the summer coming, the prison steam pipes would be turned off, making them cool enough to climb through. On the morning of June 6, 2015, the two men did just that cutting a hole in the steam pipe, and even leaving behind a note that said, have a nice day. Matt and Sweat crawled through the pipe until they reached a manhole cover on the street, 400 feet beyond the prison walls. Though Matt and Sweat had masterminded a brilliant escape, their problems started almost immediately after leaving the prison. Joyce Mitchell, who was supposed to pick them up once they had escaped, had decided she could no longer go through with it, leaving the men to try and head for the Canadian border without a ride or any supplies. The two fugitives would eventually split up after a disagreement a couple weeks later, being caught shortly afterwards. Richard Matt was shot and killed after brandishing a shotgun at police on June 26th. David Sweat was caught just two days later and had multiple years added to his prison sentence. The manhunt for the two men is estimated to have cost the state of New York $23 million. While Frank Abagnale Jr. is best known for his incredible fraud crimes popularized by the movie Catch Me If You Can, he also notably escaped police custody twice. The first time happened while he was being deported back to the U.S. from Sweden, when he was able to successfully escape from his plane after a touchdown at New York's JFK airport. The second and more unbelievable escape happened while he was awaiting trial in April of 1971. When Abagnale was brought to the Federal Detention Center in Atlanta, Georgia, his accompanying U.S. Marshal reportedly forgot to bring his detention commitment papers. 
Using this to his advantage, Abagnale convinced staff at the facility that he was an undercover prison inspector conducting an audit of the center. The con was further bolstered by one of Abagnale's friends, who posed as an FBI agent and created a fraudulent business card for him that seemed to back up Abagnale's credentials. Staff at the facility believed the story, and when they later allowed him to have an unsupervised visit with the friend outside the prison, the two quickly drove off. Despite the ingenuity of the plan, Abagnale was only free for a few weeks and was returned to prison before famously turning his life around. Notorious French criminal Pascal Payette holds one of the strangest records ever for prison escapes. He has planned the most number of successful jailbreaks using a helicopter. Payette first escaped using this method in 2001 after being arrested for a 1997 armored car robbery in which a guard was killed. To pull off his Hollywood-style escape, Payette enlisted the help of his friend, Frederick Impolco, who hijacked a helicopter and met him on the roof of the prison. Not content to simply break out once, Payette organized another helicopter escape in April of 2003, this time returning to free his three accomplices in the 1997 robbery. Though the men successfully got away, all of them were captured within three weeks of their escape. By 2007, Payette had been sentenced to 30 years for murder and armed robbery, as well as an additional 13 years for his previous escapes. He was classified as a prisoner needing especially high surveillance and was placed in solitary confinement. He was also never kept in the same prison for more than six months. Despite these aggressive measures, Payette organized yet another escape and was freed for a third time when four of his associates took advantage of Bastille Day celebrations to hijack a helicopter and break him out of prison. He managed to evade capture for slightly longer this time, but was eventually caught after two months. He received an additional five years for his final escape. That brings us to the end of our list. Do you know of any other ingenious prison escapes that you think we missed? let us know in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for watching.